What's going on everyone? It's Ben from YJ from Zero back with another retro Yu-Gi-Oh video and this video is going to be a fun one. Well, maybe depending on what decks you like seeing because this deck is going to be Chain Burn. Now I built this deck in my last video, uh, so definitely check that out if you're interested. But this is specifically Chain Burn in Stein format, which is the format based around the 2006 SJC San Jose held in December before the emergency ban list hit Stein. So... This format is pretty dominated by Steiner Decay, which makes Chainburn a pretty good pick in the format because Chainburn can aggro down decks below 5,000 life points very quickly. So that's pretty good. And uh, so this is my take on it. I do have some things that I would like to change after sort of doing some test games with this deck, uh, which is, as I mentioned in the previous video, you know, test games are very, very important at figuring out what works, what doesn't in a deck. But I think this has some pretty good ideas in it. I do like some of the cards in it. And uh, I'll dive into the replays to sort of explain more of what I mean there. Okay, we got our first game against Dump Truck, a free from guests on the channel. Always pleasure to have them on. We're diving into the game. Now, if you like seeing this sort of gameplay, definitely subscribe to the channel because it really helps grow the community and, you know, just helps make us get more games and uh, explore these formats even more. In addition, you know, like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff as well. But uh, we're going to dive into this game. This is a pretty good hand from us. Uh, we've got Morphing Dark, which is very good for the deck, drawing five new ones after, you know, committing their board. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the Morphing Jar and then just set everything. If they go Heavy Storm here, it's a little bit unfortunate that we're losing the Tremendous Fire. But I want this, you know, sort of later for more chains. Um, and so I figure I could potentially set up a bigger chain next turn here. But uh, maybe I should just activate the Tremendous Fire and then end everything. Because, you know, our, our board is kind of clogged anyways. So, you know, even if we set up some chains next turn... You know, we won't be able to chain any quickly spells from hand, right? So I think I probably should have just fired Tremendous Fire and then, you know, set the Morphing Jar, done everything else. But I didn't do that, and sort of that's like a learning curve that you have to take with the deck. They go Heavy Storm, and our Tremendous Fire is kind of useless here. We go for Nightmare Wheel, we go for Secret Barrel, and uh, we go for Accumulate Fortune as Chain Link 4, and then Chain Strike as Chain Link 5. They then go for Jar of Greed here, drawing 1, uh, and this will be 2,000 damage to them. And uh, I guess I maybe should have waited... I, I think I maybe activated Chain Strike too quickly after Accumulated Fortune, figuring that they didn't have anything here, but maybe I should have waited a little bit on the Accumulated Fortune activation, because maybe they just felt like we were building up to an Accumulated Fortune as opposed to a Chain Strike, and then they would have activated the Jar of Greed there. So we could have gotten in a little bit more damage if I had just been a bit more careful in communicating with my opponent. But anyways, uh, we were able to deal a fair bit of damage here. Uh, they do go for a Creature Swap, though, and Tribute over the Morphing Jar, so that way we don't get the draws there, which is quite unfortunate. Uh, attacking over the Sand Gannage while well, getting out of Mystic Fortune level 2 to make our uh, day a bit sadder here. They're going to set one pass back to us. We draw a Nightmare Wheel, which is pretty good, along with its Gravity by Injustice Earth. They've used up Heavy, so we can just set three without much fear here. And we're going to pass back to them. They go for a Breaker here, and they do manage to pop the Nightmare Wheel, which is a bit unfortunate. We can't get that burn in. But Gravity Bind is the more important card overall, because this blocks all their attacks. We draw another Justice Earth, which is pretty good if they commit the Mystic Storm in level 2 just to get hidden in here. And that's 3,000 damage from the Justice Earth there, so that's pretty good. They're going to set one Pass back to us. We draw a Stealth Bird here as well. We're going to set that Pass back to them. This is mainly to bait them into summoning out the Mystic Sword in level 2. But they've got the Nox, so they'll be able to deal with that there. So we can't bait them into summing that out, but we've got a Secret Barrel here. So in a couple turns, if they do commit that third monster, we got 3,000 damage. Secret Barrel then would just need them to have seven cards, which they do have right now, uh, to be lethal damage. So I feel pretty good about this scenario. Um, and they do indeed commit the Mystic Sword in level 2. So we're just going to fire the Just Desserts and fire another Just Desserts and then fire the Secret Barrel. And that should do it there. And that will indeed be the end of the game. So we did manage to win that game one with Chainburn. But the big uphill battle here with Chainburn is always the games two and three. Now we side into a full Steiner Decay smoke screen there, as I mentioned in my deck building video. So definitely check out which cards I swapped out there. Uh, but basically we're going hard into Steiner Decay, figuring that they've got things like Death Wombats, Decrees, etc. That's kind of useless against a Steiner Decay uh, in game two and three. They're going to go for a Rota though, grabbing that Mystic Sword in level two. And they're going to set a card pass back to us. We run to a Morphing Jar. Ah, I do a bit of a risky play here. I just go for the Stein right away because I'm like, okay, if I go Stein, if I go Cyber End here, tack over their set, if it's a monster with very low defense, uh, then I could potentially get them down below 4,000. Then if they've got a way to stop our board, we've got Ring to pop our own Cyber End and cause a draw here. So I want to get really aggressive really quickly because we do have the Ring and the Stein in hand. So I just figure it's good to go for this. 
But I also could have just done something else like set them a manga. But that would have been bad because, you know, they get swordsman level 2 in hand. So that kind of deals with our entire board anyways. So I feel like this is better just to go for. But unfortunately, it's Rat, which is the biggest punish for us because we can't attack him with Stein. Um, so it's a bit awkward here. But we're still in an okay spot. We've got Ring to stop the Rat here. That's not terrible. They do have the Exiled Force, though, to pop the tw uh, End Dragon. So that's kind of rough. We do get to Ring their Rat, which I do think is the right choice. That's a bit of an annoying card to deal with. And uh, they're going to banish that rat for a Gigantes here, which is a bit problematic for us. We draw a Graceful Charity, at least, so we can try and filter out into things to stop that here. But unfortunately, we don't really draw any good ones. We draw Poison the Old Man, which is more burn damage, but we don't really have any way to get around that. So what we do here is we set the um, Spirit Reaper, switch Stein of Defense, and pass back to them. And the reason I do this, one, I don't want to commit too much in a Heavy Storm. So, uh, you know, I keep the Poison in hand. But two, I want to bait them into summoning out Mystic Sword in level two, attacking into the Reaper. And then we can summon out this Momonga, hit over the Mystic Sword in level two, and uh, go from there. So that's my sort of plan here. Unfortunately, they've got Exiled Force, so that will be able to pop the Reaper there. And they're able to just hit over the Stein. And now we're in a bit of a tough spot here. We draw Threatening Orbs pretty decent as well. Uh, we're just going to summon out this Momonga, pass back to them. Yeah, this is a little bit awkward for us. But I think it's ultimately fine because, like, they don't really have too many ways to deal with this. Um, unfortunately, this DD War Lady is one of them. And uh, the Boboku will not stop the War Lady from banishing our Momonga. So, you know, there's an argument for maybe setting the T-Roar here as well. But if I set the T-Roar and they've got Heavy this turn, they Heavy our board. I can't chain both. Well, I can chain both, I guess, Threatening Roar and Boboku. But it's basically losing a lot of value on that. So, I didn't want to do that. And, um, unfortunately, we do get punished for that here. So, they're going to banish that. I just fire Boboku because we've already got a T-Roar in hand too. So, might as well fire them both. And I just set the Nightmare Wheel in the Poison. I think in hindsight, I probably should have just set the Threatening Roar as well. Um, there's not really much point into keeping the running war here, but we get reward for it because we've got this nightmare wheel so we can stop the gigantes there. They just tribute set over that to get rid of the nightmare wheel. We get a secret barrel, which doesn't really do anything for us here. We set our entire hand here, pass back to them. They've got a death wombat that just shuts down all of our burn cards as well. So, you know, our, our deck is in a bit of a bad spot. We don't really have too many ways out of this. We just got to normal summon that manga because, again, they've got Mystic Sword in level 2 that we've known about since the start. They're going to summon out that Mystic Sword in level 2. And unfortunately, you know, we do gain a 1,000 from this manga dying, but, you know, we're not in a really good spot. So not much we can do here. Uh, they will attack in with the Mystic Sword in level 2. I could have potentially... Actually, I don't have anything. No, I couldn't have potentially done anything there, so... Yeah, it's not going to do anything for us here. Nightmare Wheel can at least stop the Wombat, so that's kind of nice. Um, but, you know, it doesn't deal the burn as the Wombat's on field, so a bit awkward for us. We take the 9 because, you know, we're already in a bit of a tough spot. They're going to set one pass back to us. We draw Reckless. Not really going to be the most useful thing in the world. This is basically just a slow march to the end. Uh, you know, we've got Poison and the Reckless here to chain to the Heavy, um, but nothing else is really going to make a difference there. So, um, yeah, I mean, good to get rid of the TT at least, but... It's not really the best for us. And yeah, they're just going to flip up the Cyber Dragon and that'll be the end of the game. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's how the deck often goes in games two and three. You kind of got to go all in on the Stein OTK. And if that doesn't necessarily work, um, then you can be in a bad spot. I could have played that game a bit differently, not gone for the Cyber End, done stuff like that. Could have gone for Dark Balter instead, maybe to play around the Rat, but then they just bring out Cyber Dragon and get over it that way. So that's not necessarily the best for us there either. So I don't really think there was a super good way to play out of that hand, especially knowing the Swords in level 2 in hand. But I don't know. Uh, there, there are different things I could have done, maybe. But this is a much better hand. We keep it on the Cyan OTK because we've seen Wombats in their deck already. Uh, so I fear that they're probably still on uh, ways to counter the Chainburn side of our deck. So uh, we set the Nightmare Wheel, Threatening Roar, and Good Goblin Housekeeping. And also this Reckless Greed pass back to them. I feel like this should be a good way to set up for the OTK here. And we get Reckless and also the Good Goblin Housekeeping to sort of fix our hand a little bit. To, um, you know, keep the Cyberstein limit removal and also draw ways to deal with their back row. So I feel pretty good about that. Um, but they go for a copy here. And so I get a little bit punished for holding the Stein in hand. I guess holding the limiter in hand as well. Maybe I should have set the limiter. But, um... You know, I didn't want to commit the Stein to field because I feel like they've got too many ways to remove that from field and we want this in hand. So either way, the Stein would be gone. So I don't know what to think here, but they take the limiter instead. So, you know, I, I don't know what exactly to make of that, but I guess this means that they probably have a way to stop the Stein. They're going to attack in with Warrior Lady. I could have potentially T-roared this. 
I think in hindsight, I might have wanted to T-Roar this, but that's putting a lot on the fact that I'm going to draw a Spell and Trap removal card here and that they don't have like T-Roar or something after seeing this Dino Decay in game two. So I just decided to take the damage here. So I'll take the 15. You know, we're still in Stein range, so it's not the worst thing in the world. They're going to set three pass back to us. We draw a Megamorph here as well, which is pretty decent. Um, you know, it sort of enabled us to go for our OTK a little bit here. So we're going to do this Reckless Greed now. Go for the True Nade here, and they've got a... Ring of Destruction on the Warrior Lady. That's a bit awkward for us, but we do have some draw power in the form of Good Goblin Housekeeping. If we can draw into a Poison the Old Man, then we can actually get back into this game and potentially win from this position. But uh, unfortunately, we do not. We just draw another Megamorph here. Uh, I feel like of these cards, we probably want to put back a Megamorph because having two is kind of redundant at this point. Um, but yeah, it's kind of unfortunate we're down to 5,000 now. I'm just going to summon the Stein and use it to beat in here, uh, drop them down to 4,800, and then I'm just going to set the Wuboku, set the Nightmare Wheel, pass back to them, and they're going to set one, set two, pass back to us, and uh, we don't draw because of Reckless. We're going to attack in for 700 off this Stein. They've got a Call of the Haunted going for Warrior Lady. That's a bit bad for us here, um, and we're just going to pass back to them. Even if we equip Megamorph to the Warrior Lady, it's at 750, so we can still attack over the Stein, and it probably won't matter either way here, so... Uh, they're going to go for Jar, draw one deeper, and now they're going to go for just attacking in. And, um, I mean, we got Nightmare Wheel to stop it, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Because we can equip that onto that, deal 500 every turn. They're going to set two, pass back to us. We don't draw here again. And, um, I have a bit of a choice here. I could attack into their set with the Cyberstein, you know, having the read that maybe it's a flip monster that I want to get off field. But I feel like it's just better to, you know, hold on to it and just switch it to defense because then I don't take any damage here. Um, and with Boku, you know, I can stop them from attacking in to the Stein, really, so, or attacking over it, at least. So they're going to flip up a Magician of Faith here, though, grab a Confiscation, rip a card out of our hand. That dropped them down to 3,300, which is kind of nice for us. They're going to rip the Megamorph, though. I mean, I, that doesn't really seem like it would have been the best for us here either way, so I think it's fine. Uh, they flip Decree, and that's going to be really bad for our deck. Again, you know, this sort of, like, Decree hoses the burn side of the deck, which is why you keep it on Stein OTK in Game 3. But, you know, you don't really have too many cards that you can side out. So, you know, you're still going to have a lot of traps in the deck. So Decree still hoses the deck, even after siding, even if you side into more of a Sino Decay style deck. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of rough. That's sort of like one of Chainburn's major flaws in this format. I mean, the way that I built my deck, you know, it also is vulnerable to that. So that is something to keep in mind as well. And, um, you know, I'm going to show off one more game with this deck after the Dump Truck game. But uh, I think it's pretty much the writing on the wall is here mainly. Like, I can survive a little bit here with this uh, Poison the Old Man gaining 12, dropping down to 100 life points here. But, you know, writing's on the wall. I'm, I'm not winning this game <laughs> with that decree up. And yeah, I draw another trap and that'll just be the end of the game. So I'll show off one more game with this deck, but maybe it's just, you know, a me thing. Maybe it's the way that I built it. So I also wanted to go back and test the old build that I based this off of, the Jeffrey Fiscara build from SJC San Jose. So after one more game with this deck, we'll dive into games with that deck. So we got another game here with the Chain Burn deck of my own creation, uh, or not my own creation. You know, it's, it's not like I, you know, sort of came up with a deck on the spot. It was more, you know, basing it off of a previous Chain Burn list and adding my own sort of things. But uh, we got another game with this, and we'll have to see what it does. I think this is a pretty good opening hand. We get Chain Strike plus a bunch of Chainables, so that's pretty good here. They're going to go for Graceful Pitch 2. They're going to set one, pass back to us. We draw Reckless Greed as well. So we're feeling pretty good about this overall. We're just going to set five, pass back to them. I don't really want to set Good Goblin Housekeeping at this point in the game. It is kind of a draw, but not really. So I figure uh, I'll sort of set up more... Um, cards in hand before I go for the good goblin here. They're going to go for Wild Heart, and that's a bit awkward for us, given that we are a trap-based deck. We're going to go for T-Roar here, though, so that will sort of be able to stop the Wild Heart in its own way. Uh, we get to go for Ojama Trio here as well, go for Jar of Greed, and then go for Reckless Greed and Chain Strike. So we're going to deal them uh, a whopping 2,000 life points. I would have preferred to get that as Chain Link Sinks after they activated a card effect of their own. But with Wild Heart, they don't really need to do that. So um, this is turn one on Reckless. So that is good to keep in mind. We're going to set three here. And because we've got this Drama Trio in hand, which we're fine spending back to the deck, we're not going to set that. We're just going to have it there for the Good Gulf and Housekeeping. So, you know, it's a way to dig deeper into the deck. They go for Heavy here. We've got all Chainables, though. So uh, we're going to go for that. We choose to deal the damage because I do feel like at 5200, there are ways for us to get back into this and win. And, like, we are pretty high on life overall. So I think this is fine. I, I did a mid-sequencing here. I should have done 
um, Good Goblin Housekeeping in a later chain link than, or no, Good Goblin Housekeeping in a previous chain link than uh, Reckless Greed because Reckless Greed would draw two. So then if there is a better card to spin back, then we'd be able to spin it back Goblin. But to be fair there, I think that Ojometria was the best card that we could have spun back there. So I think it ultimately worked out for us here. Unfortunately, our hand doesn't really do much, uh, especially because we're still locked under Reckless now. We're just going to set it all because they're out of heavy, so no real reason to keep it in hand. Uh, if we do get good Goblin, then um, we get to draw two put back one, which is much better than just having one. So um, yeah, we just kind of have to take this damage. We're going to go for Tremendous Fire, Jar of Reed, and Chain Strike, just hoping that this can get us into something good here, but um, I doubt it will. Um... I mean, yeah, Odometry is not going to do it there, so we're just going to set that as a bluff, but, you know, this will probably be the end of the game. Not really much we can do here. Occasionally, this does happen. You know, Reckless Greed is both a blessing and a curse, where, you know, if you're forced to use it early, then, um, yeah, I mean, I guess we weren't forced to use it early. I guess we could have just kept drawing later, but I felt like it was worth it to get the Chain Link, like, that high up for Chain Strike, but, um, you know, there are different sort of ideas about that sort of thing, so some people choose to take it a bit slower, some people choose to go all in early. I like to just go all in early, um, because I do feel like, you know, if you can get enough burn damage in early enough, then you can be in a good spot later, especially because they had five monsters on board for, you know, just desserts or things like that, so I felt like it was pretty good, but, yeah, anyways, here we're gonna go, uh, you know, we're gonna just go for Graceful, pitch a, uh, let's see, a Heavy and a Spirit Reaper. We did side in to the Steino TK part of the deck, I believe, because, you know, they saw we were on Chain Burn, and they can just easily side against that. So uh, we're just going to set that Stealth Bird. They've got a, an Exiled Force here, so they're able to deal with that, unfortunately. But um, we go for a True Nade here, or not a True Nade, a Reckless Greed in the end phase, because if they've got Decree, we want to use this to be able to, you know, get around it. Um, but yeah, now our draw phases are shut off, so we're just going to set everything pass back to them, because Morphing Jar is pretty good for us here, drawing five. So I feel like this is fine. They go for Heavy now, though. That's a bit awkward for us. We go for Double Jar and Secret Barrel just to get in some Burn. But we will lose a Megamorph and a Trunade. Now, they do have, you know, a lot of their own back row that they also lost there. So that's kind of nice, but kind of awkward there overall. They go for an Exile here on our Jar, set one pass back to us. And honestly, this is not the worst spot to be in. We can go for a Cyber Stein here, pay five, go for Cyber Twin, and get in for a ton of damage. We can't kill them this turn, but we're still in a good enough spot that I feel like we're probably going to be winning this game overall. I mean, we get them down to 500 life points. We're playing a bunch of burn cards in our deck. We got Woboku to protect ourselves as well. So I feel like we're in a very, very good spot here. Uh, unfortunately, they've got Death's Wombat here to start off our burn, and they've also got a Smash and Ground to deal with our Cyber Twin. And uh, so we'll have to see how much damage a Death's Wombat can do against us, especially... Um, okay, that was the second turn on Greed the last turn, so we are good to draw here. We can set this Momonga at least deck thin and gain some life here. So that's not bad. They go for Rota, though, and that's going to be bad for us because they get Mystic Sword in level 2. They're able to attack over our Momonga here and then get in for 16. So it's not looking good for us. Uh, we got one turn to draw into something that actually helps us here. Uh, I mean, Woboku can buy us a turn, but um, it's not necessarily going to be the best overall. We're going to switch the uh, Mystic Sword in level 2 to defense. Just play around Mirror Force. We got Nightmare Wheel to stop the Wombat there. That's pretty good. And uh, they actually um, misremember about Wombat. So, you know, Wombat will stop the damage that Nightmare Wheel does. I was just playing it to sort of stall them out a bit there. Um, so they actually could have won that game. I think they honestly maybe would have won that game because Wombat's just so brutal for our deck to deal with. And we just have no real out to it um, after siding. We do have some ways to get around things. Like, you know, if we draw into a monster plus Megamorph, that will be able to, to let us hit over the Wombat or things like that. Um, but I do think that um, we would have been losing that game there. But either way, we get a game one. Uh, so, you know, this isn't a 2-0, so, you know, that's something, but keep in mind that I think this game probably should have been a 2-0 match, um, on my opponent's part, but we have another chance to win the game, so let's see if we can actually take it. So we're still on the sign of TK because, again, you know, they're on Wombat, they're probably on Decree as well, uh, so, you know, our deck is kind of suffering if we keep it in all on Chain Burn. We're gonna set this Spear Reaper, set Megamorph, Secret Barrel, and Boku here. Uh, we got another Megamorph in hand, which is why I'm fine setting the one. And they do indeed hit that Megamorph, so I'm very glad I did that as the bluff. So uh, they got unlucky on that sort of 50, well, not 50, 50, 33% um, chance of hitting that um, sort of dead card there. But they're going to attack into our Reaper with the DD Warrior, and then attack in directly with uh, the Wild Heart. Wild Heart's a bit annoying for us, but we don't really, you know, have any way to get around that anyways. We're just going to summon out this Momonga, equip it with a Megamorph there, and just try and hit over the... Um, Wild Heart. We know they've got access to things like Mystic Sword in level 2 or things like that. So I don't really want to set this 
Um, and also I feel like maybe they took out some of their battle traps if they're playing Decree or things like that. So I feel like this should be a bit safer than it would normally be. So we go in uh, with the Mamanga, and they do indeed have the Saku here, probably just to deal with the OTK in case we go Stein OTK. So, you know, that's kind of also awkward because if they know we're on Stein OTK and they figured that we're going to be on Stein OTK for game three, you know, they can sort of keep in things to stop us from, um, you know, having a good time there with Stein OTK. Um, but luckily that Boku will stop the damage that would be dealt here uh, this turn. And if they do indeed deal 2,900 exactly, then we can potentially poison the old man up above 5,000 life points. Uh, or actually, can we? No, we can't. Uh, yeah, we're, we're out of that range. So actually, we can't do anything about that. But, um, you know, maybe Reckless can draw us into another poison plus Stein. I don't know. I'm just hoping here. T-Roar and Jar are like, okay, I guess. Jar gets us another draw. T-Roar staves off more damage. Then you got Wombat though. So now all our burn cards are shut off. So that's not good for us. Uh, we're in a really, really bad spot. We are just going to jar to draw, and I mean, Gravity Bind is okay, but it doesn't actually deal with their board that well, because they can still attack with Wild Heart and Wombat, so uh, that's fun. Um, <laughs> we're, in a, we're in a bad spot here. They're going to attack in for 16, attack in for 14, or at least attempt to, but we got the Bind for that. They're attacking for 15 now. Drop us down to 500. They've got Ring on their Zalug. Luckily, we can use this, point the old man, go up by 12, and so we're not dead here. We're just at 300, so that's a bit bad for us, and uh, Woboku will help a little bit, but not really too much here. It's just sort of buying time at this point. Um, but I don't really know how we're getting out of this one. Secret Barrel will not do it. So we're just going to set that as a bluff, see if that changes anything, but it will not. Uh, so yeah, that's just going to be the end of the game with these double Secret Barrels there. So yeah, um, I don't think this deck is necessarily it, especially my build of it. I think my build has some issues. I think Good Goblin Housekeeping is not high impact enough. I think Stealth Bird may be a bit too much of a pie in the sky sort of dream. I do like the Nightmare Wheel overall. I think it's good as defense and also it does potentially get in burn. So I like that part of it. It also starts to chain every turn, which is nice. Um, so I do like that sort of thing that I added to the deck. I think honestly, this deck does need more monsters in it probably, like Exiled Forces and things. Those are probably good to have here. Um, I think also potentially just Torrential Tribute. That's a very good card to have in the deck. Um, I get why it wasn't in the original um 55 i don't think it was but uh i i do think it is important to have in the deck because it is very good at you know sort of clearing away of your opponent's monster and potentially getting in for some aggressive pressure so i do like it a lot and also if you do want to add back marin to the deck then you know it can deal with marin and potentially deal 1000 damage to your opponent but uh as i mentioned you know this was sort of the last of the games that i got with my build of the deck but i also played with the original sjc San Jose, Jeffrey Fisicaro list, which let's actually bring that up on screen right now. That's this list right here. So, you know, it's Chain Strike. Basically, this is the list that I started with in the last deck building video. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's got some different things than us. It's got the Marins, which I mentioned before. Um, doesn't have TT in the deck. I think I would play TT in the deck uh, if I was sort of constructing this again. Um, I would also probably do things like adding the Nightmare Wheels, as I mentioned, potentially shifting some things around, but I think it's all together, you know, a pretty good version of the deck. And so let's see if this actually does better than the version of the deck that I played, or if Chain Burn just isn't quite it in this format. Okay, we got a game against Aratos here, another frequent guest on the channel. Pleasure to have them on, as always. And uh, we're going to dive into the games. If you want to be in any of these videos or just play games in these formats in general, definitely head over to the YGO from Zero Discord server, linked in the description down below. Uh, that's where I get all the games for these videos, by the way. But uh, our opponent's going to set one pass back to us. We draw a Marin, which is pretty good here. We're just going to set a Sangan, uh, set the Poison, set the Accumulated Fortune, set the Jester, set the Jar of Greed, pass back to them. Because um, what I want to set up is I want them to pop the Sangan, we search out Morphing Jar, then we set the Marin, and they think it's Morphing Jar, and then they do like Exile Force on it or something like that. They get punished for that, and then we can set our Morphing Jar in peace. So that's sort of what I want to set up here. We'll see if it actually goes through. They're just going to go for Mobius instead of like Zabord or anything like that. Um, but we're going to chain those, and then we're going to go for Accumulated Fortune here while we have the opportunity to. So this actually will be Chain Link 5 on Accumulated Fortune, but that doesn't really matter as much as, like, for Chain Strike. Um, because, you know, Chain Strike, that cares what Link it is, but the uh, Accumulated Fortune does not. We actually draw into the Morphing Jar, which is kind of funny, so we can search out something else with Sangan. And by searching something else out with Sangan, I feel like they'll then know that uh, we have the Morphing Jar in hand. We'll have to see exactly there. Uh, saying it's going to search at Exile because I want to deal with the Exile, uh, pop the Mobius, and then potentially set up for attacking him with Marin next turn. Uh, so we're just going to do that now. 
pop that. Then we're going to set three, pass back to them. They go for call on the Mobius, which is a bit annoying, or it would be if we didn't have this dimension wall here, to deal them 2,400 damage for trying to do that. So they're going to attack in with the Mobius there, dealing 24, or trying to, but they're actually going to deal 2,400 to themselves, uh, drop them down to 4,300, pass them back to us. And uh, we draw a chain strike, which is pretty decent here. Now, I think I do make a bit of a misplay. Seeing that they're on the Apprentice Magician, I should sort of be thinking, okay, well, Old Vindictive Magician can definitely be a card in their deck. And if it is Old Vindictive set there, then saying the Morphing Guard is a really bad play. But I'm like, you know, I, I'm like, well, if that's Magician of Faith or something, then, you know, I'm pretty fine just saying this Morphing Guard. But realistically, they wouldn't do that. It could also be another Apprentice Magician, to be fair. Um, but, you know, I, I feel like it just is better to set the Marin just in case. Worst case scenario, they attack into the Marin. We're locking up their zones with the Ojamatry anyways, so we're in a fine spot there. So I think it ultimately is fine just to set the Marin first and, um, you know, hold the Morphing Jar. But, uh, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, and um, unfortunately it did not work out for us here. So we're going to go for the Ojama Trio there, and they're going to flip up a Old Vindictive Magician here, popping our set monster, and... Uh, now we're in a bad spot. We chain Woboku, chain Chain Strike to at least get in some damage here. Getting in for 1,200. If we draw into a Just Desserts, then they just lose the game here, basically. Um, not quite, but it is pretty close. Uh, we draw into a Geometry instead, though, but we can do a fun little bluff here because we can summon out this Marin attack into the Old Vindictive here. If they use a Battle Trap on it, it's 1,000 damage to them. I'm fine with that. If they don't, then I set the Geometry and potentially bluff that if they attack in the Marin, they're just losing the game. Um, so... Yeah, I feel like this is a pretty good spot to be in because right now a Jet Search will not kill them. But if they attack in with the Mobius into the Marin, take a thousand. If I get Jet Search set here, that will kill them. So uh, I'm sort of putting them in a tough spot. I think, in all honesty, they kind of have to attack here, though. So that's what they do because basically, if they've got Jet Search, or if I get Jet Search, that is, they lose the game no matter what. So they're like, I got to play like you don't have it. And I, I do indeed not have it. So, um, and that is still not it, but it is Gravity Bomb, which is very good at stopping what they've got here. So they're going to attack in, but we've got the Gravity Bind here. So that'll wall them up a bit. And uh, we're drawing into non-burn, but eventually we will hopefully be able to draw into it. We set the Reckless here, and uh, they're going to tribute over the Nudoria for a Zaborg. That's a pretty clever play because they have to pop one of their own tokens, clear up their zones a little bit here. They will take 300 from that, but you know if they ever do manage to clear the Gravity Bind here, they're in a good spot. I set the Chain Strike here because, um, I mean, if they go heavy, we chain Reckless chain chain strike that's not quite lethal but you know if i can set up a chain with chain strike here to get over um 1200 then that's pretty good that will win the game for us so uh, i feel like this is pretty good they go for stein just to beat in for 700 that's perfectly fine we'll take that 700 and then uh they'll pass back down so we draw secret barrel that should just do it we'll just draw reckless just in case because we also want to maybe hide setting the secret barrel i feel like they don't have an msc but if they do have just an msc or dust tornado or something that they're playing on just blind sniping our new set with I'll, you know, be able to disguise it here at least, but, um, you know, realistically that won't happen. Either way, though, we do win the game. We got Secret Bell here, and yeah, that'll just be the end of the game. If they had a way to stop this, we had a ring, we had Chain Strike, we had so many ways to win from this position, so... Um, yeah, that was a pretty good game one. Again, the deck doing what it wants to do game one is usually wins game one because your opponent generally did not have the tools in the deck to deal with it. Uh, of course, you know, Good play can also get your opponent pretty far. I think Ratos, though, played this well. I think all my opponents have honestly played the games one pretty well. But sometimes there's nothing you can do against this deck. Um, and, you know, that is sort of a downside to this deck being in the format. But that being said, I think games two and three being really rough for this deck is a pretty even trade-off for it. So we set the manga here, set Poison, Jar, and Cylinder there, and pass back to them. Uh, Cylinder can't be changed, so that's kind of awkward if, get, if they've got Heavy or something, but I thought it was ultimately pretty good. They go for a Snipe Hunter here. Now, if they target the back row, especially a chainable back row, you actually have to chain to the activation of the effect. You can't wait for the die roll, because by that point, it's resolving. So you can't chain to, like, you know, the resolution. You can't, you can't chain partway through when an effect's resolving, so, like... Uh, if they did target our back row, we would have to, you know, chain it if it's chainable. But they do not. They target the set, they roll a six, and then they roll a one. And, I mean, that's that's just snipe under for you. You know, you're going to get the bad rolls there. Um, everyone else that you face who uses snipe under is going to get the good rolls, but it's always going to be the bad rolls for you. That's just the reality of the card. Uh, they're going to attack in for 14 with the tomato, attack in 15 with the snipe under. We just go for the magic cylinder here, get some value off it. If they decided in decree, we want to deal with that as soon as possible. Uh, and then they're going to set one. We go for Jar here. Uh, I think I could have saved the Jar. I was thinking, like, if they had Decree, I wanted to, you know, use it now. But if they get Decree, we're kind of in a bad spot either way. And this doesn't play into, like, Dust Shoot. So, um, 
or this does play into Dust Shoot, that is, because now we're going to be at four cards in hand. So if they do have Dust Shoot here, that's bad for us, but uh, we don't draw a monster anyway. So, you know, maybe we can do there. We could have also chained Scapegoat in, like, draw phase with draw phase priority to get around a particular, like, um, Dust Shoot play. But, you know, we didn't draw monsters, so that doesn't matter there. But we're just going to set the Poison and the Scapegoat. And it turns out they do indeed have the Decree, so I'm glad I went for the Jar of Greed there. Uh, unfortunately for them, we don't have any traps, but uh, that will be problematic for us later on. Um, if they, you know, sort of do something like that. So they're going to attack in for 400. We will take that 400. You know, I'm fine with that. But what I'd rather have is uh, two tokens here to soak up later attacks or potentially just to do random things with later. Um, so I'll take the four. But then uh, they'll be able to beat over two of the tokens that are passed back to us. Secret Rattle is not going to help us here with a decree up. We set it anyways as a bluff. I think I should have kept it in hand realistically. Um, I'm not really sure what would change with this, but like it is blocking a spawn trap card zone. So... Uh, if we do a major, like, uh, Chain Strike play here, then this complicates things a little bit. But actually, we took out Chain Strike from the deck, so it didn't really matter uh, after siding, I guess. But I think I still should have kept in hand just in case something comes up where I, I do want to set other things. Like Morphing Jar, for instance. If I draw into Morphing Jar, um, then, you know, I want to set my spells. I don't necessarily want to set my Dead Traps. So I set a Spirit Reaper here, pass back to them. They will go for Snipe Hunter yet again, pitch in one, targeting the Reaper, and they will indeed hit that, so the Reaper will fall. Um, also, as a note, you know, even if they missed the Reaper and attacked in, it would block their attack this turn, but then next turn they could just pitch target with Snipe Hunter, and it would automatically pop itself, because even if Snipe Hunter misses, uh, it would still destroy itself because it was targeted. So uh, they're going to attack in for a ton of damage here, dropping us down to 1,400, but that does turn on our Megamorphs a bit more, so if we draw into a monster here, they can hit over that. That's kind of nice. Uh, poison can at least keep us alive here, but uh, it's kind of awkward here. Tagging for 14, we'll uh, go up by 12 with that poison. They're tagging in for 15. We'll go up for another 12 with that poison. And uh, now we're down to 900. We'll take the four. Um, it might as well. Um, we're not dead here, so we'll save the poison for later. Mamanga, pretty good here. I think in hindsight, what I should have done here is I should have summoned out Mamanga, equipped with Megamorph, tacked over the Snipe Hunter. Because, you know, that deal with the Snipe Hunter right away, their trap is shut off by Decree. And, you know... Mamanga is kind of annoying for them to deal with. They can always crash in Apprentice Magician into the Mamanga and then get Old Vindictive and then that will deal with it. So I don't think it actually saves us here, but it does buy us a little bit of time. So, you know, I, I did misplay here, but ultimately it doesn't actually matter because they had Creature Swap anyways. So even if we had the Mamanga here at 2000 attack, they would have Creature Swapped the Apprentice Magician and that would have just been the end of the game. So uh, nothing we really could have done to get out of this situation, but I do think it would have been better to go for the Mamanga plus Megamorph play. But that's going to do it for game two. Let's go into game three. We're staying on the Steiner TK. Because again, you know, if they've got side for the chain burn side of the deck, you know, when they are playing Decree, then uh, this is pretty bad for us. But um, this is a pretty good opening hand. We're just going to set three pass back to them. We don't have um, chain strike set here, so no need to set the poison right now. Um, they're going to go for a Wombat here. Try and attack in with that. We're just going to ring the destruction that, get it off the field, turn on our burn effects, and also deal them 1,600 points of damage. Main two, they're just going to set one, and, uh, we're going to go for Jar, just in case it's Decree there. We draw into a Mamanga, which is pretty good. We're summoning out the Mamanga, try and attack in 4,000 here. We could have also set it, just played conservatively there, but I kind of want to beat them down as quickly as possible, especially now that they've got Wombat in rotation, potentially bring that back with, like, Call of the Haunted or something. So I just want to get in for as much damage as early as possible as I can. Um, but unfortunately, they do have Mirror Force here to stop the manga. So maybe I should have said it, but I think it's ultimately fine doing that. They're going to go for Graceful here, draw three, pitch two. And what are they going to pitch? They're going to pitch Econ and Apprentice. They're going to go for this Breaker here, pop our backer. Luckily, it's a T-Roar, so we're able to stop them from attacking in there. This is a little bit awkward for us. We draw Dimension Wand pretty good. We're just going to go for Exod, though, pop the Breaker there, and then set the... Uh, Loboku and Dimension Wall in end phase. They're going to go for a call here, bring back that Wombat. That's okay. And then they're going to go for a Decree. And that's, um, I mean, that's really bad for us. Uh, that's, that's, that's just disastrous for us. Uh, we kind of lose the game for this point. Um, we're taking 3,000 here, so we can't poison back enough life to get to Cyberstein range. We do have Megamorph here. So we draw a monster, we can equip it to it, but, um, you know, that's a bit of a short clock. And, uh, we're feeling bad about that. They bring out a Snipe Hunter here. Try and go for lethal damage here. Luckily, we can poison to stay barely alive. You know, 100 life points yet again. Uh, what is with poison and retaining our life points at 100? We don't know. Um, but yeah, this is a bad spot to be in. Not really much can get us out of this. Um, I mean, like, Mamanga plus uh, Megamorph is okay, but Super Brawl will not do it, and that'll just be the end of the game. So even with the champions, or not champions, but the, the person who got top cut in the original SAC with this deck, um, even with that, the deck was not able to do it. 
in these games here. And I think that speaks to a bigger flaw with the deck as a whole. Like, it's a very, very cool deck and very, very good against Dino TK because you basically get to, you know, get them down below 5,000 really quickly and get really aggressive with that sort of thing. But after siding, it's so hard to win because, you know, even after siding out a full 15 cards and siding in a full 15 new ones, you still have to rely on a variety of traps. You still have to keep in some burn cards as well. And things like Death Wombat, Royal Decree, really just, you know, bury this deck. Like, the deck cannot deal with that sort of thing. You can potentially side things in to deal with that, but, you know, the Steiner DK deck already does that. You know, it's playing Trinades, it's playing Heavy, it's playing MST. So, I don't really think this deck is that good in this format, despite having potential. You know, and again, you know, these are two builds that are not perfect, right? I think the original deck was not a perfect build. Um, I think my additions to the deck also are not a perfect build. So if someone really, you know, sort of tries to optimize this deck further, maybe it could be something that is a tier one deck in this format. But my take on it after playing it, is that even with more optimization, I think there are just too many things standing against this deck in games two and three uh, that really prevent this deck from being a major contender in this format. But it is something fun to experiment with if you don't want to do the Stein stuff in this format. So I encourage you to do that if you're interested in it. Now, this wasn't the last game that I got with this deck. I wanted to end on a bit of a funner note. So me and Rachel's actually played a mirror match of this deck list exactly. So let's see how that one actually turns out now. Here we got our last game here, a mirror match between the Jeffrey Fisicaro burn list here. And uh, this will be a wild one. <laughs> you know, this, this is a very interesting mirror. A lot of very interesting interactions that, you know, you don't, come up with in other decks unless they're playing specific cards so that'll make it very very interesting to see what actually happens here but uh we're gonna do the classic set five pass you know we got accumulated fortune there we got some jar of greed there so we can potentially draw our way into more things they're just gonna start by bringing out a mecha dog marin attacking in for a thousand here that's a bit awkward for us we do have the ring though to pop the marin we are taking um you know two thousand from this but you know it's a small price to play to get our chains going to get more draws in here so we're going to go for the chain link for accumulated fortune there before taking our 2000 damage because 1000 from the ring and 1000 more from the Marin. So, um, yeah, this is, oh, scapegoat is so bad in this deck against the mirror. Yeah, it's not a good draw, but we do have some other good draws. We got the tremendous fire, we got secret barrel, we got Boku. Those are pretty decent. Uh, we do have this other secret barrel as well. We could have used that in the previous chain, but I kind of just wanted to go for the full four, um, just to get accumulated fortune and then get out. I wanted to wait for them to sort of have more cards to go for the secret battle burn thing. So uh, I'm just going to set three, pass back to them. I think setting the scapegoat was a mistake because, again, they're on Dust search, so I don't think there's ever a time when I activate the scapegoat here. So just clogging up zones. Um, and honestly, setting double Boku could potentially have turned out well for me because I can get two card effects with the same name in the chain. Uh, that can be good. But um, I got two secret barrels, so that should be able to do that there. Um, they're just going to set one pass back to us. We draw Jar. Jar is very good here. We're going to set that pass back to them. Uh, and they're going to go for a Jar of their own. So it seems like they're trying to do a bit of a, a chain link play here. And to sort of counteract that, I'm going to just chain my own Jar. Because, you know, if we do this, then there will be two effects with the same name in the chain. And they won't be able to use Chain Strike. They won't be able to use uh, Accumulated Fortune. So I'm fine just going for that Jar there. So that sort of fades what they're doing here. A little bit, or at least deprived from the chain link. They're going to set one pass back to us. We draw Exiled Force. We're just going to set this Sangan instead. We could have Exiled Force for one of their tokens, but that's basically taking away damage for us when we get these secret barrels here. So I feel like I don't need to do that now. And Sangan can search us out something later. So I feel like that's pretty good. We draw Jetsters, which is really good when they've got Trio online. So we're mathing because I think we can actually potentially win the game on the following turn. So we go for the Tremendous Fire. We go for the Exiled Force here. And we search out a Morphing Jar here. That doesn't really matter as much. Um, we just do it to do it. But uh, what will matter is that now, this turn, we should be able to win if they activate one single effect. Uh, namely Tremendous Fire. Actually, we could have just done this beforehand. But I didn't necessarily want to you know, open up the way for their own Chain Links or something. Or... I don't know. I don't actually know why I didn't do this because I don't have chain strikes online, so I could have just won immediately. Um, but yeah, instead uh, I, I just wait for them to go for the uh, tremendous fire. I math out a bit to make sure that like I do have lethal here, and I do think I do. Uh, yeah, I think I had lethal before they activated the 500 burn on tremendous fire. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve cards for them. Uh, we got double cheeker barrel, so that's 4,800 total, 1,500. Yeah, so I, I win this even without the tremendous fire burn. So I should have just gone for it. But um, yeah, either way here, we, we win the game. I get double uh, cheeker barrel here just in case, yeah, they're trying to do a chain strike play. This will prevent them from doing that. Um, and 
they can't activate fortune as well because there's double barrel there and we've got the just desserts and uh so that will be the end of the game there um because that will you know pop or not pop but it will it'll deal 15 for the just desserts and then 4800 for the barrels and that will put them down to zero so we managed to win game one Game two, what I should have done is I should have taken out the scapegoat because scapegoat's really bad in this matchup, but I wasn't thinking of it. I was thinking of more things like, you know, Matic Cylinder and stuff like that um, because I figured, you know, my opponent's not going to be attacking me all too often, so um, I can deal with those. But um, yeah, I should have kept in the, uh, or I should have taken out the scapegoats there in hindsight, but I did not do that. So, you know, you may see that in this game here. Uh, it may come up, but our opponent's going to set three, four, pass back to us, and um this is a really good hand from us. Uh, we got Marin to just get aggressive here. Deal a thousand. Um, we will indeed deal that thousand there. And then main two, we're just going to set the barrel, um, the trio, the accumulate fortune, and the chain strike. We can set up a major, major play here if we want to next turn with the chain strike. They're going to set one pass back to us. We also have tremendous fire here. So I'm just going to go attack in with Marin right now. They're going to go for mirror force here. And uh, they're going to think about this, you know, if they want to chain anything, we're fine with that mirror force going through. We don't need to, you know, sort of set up our chain strikes up now, in my opinion. Uh, but they're going to go secret barrel. And um, I'm going to let them do one more because once they get up to three, I want to use an accumulated fortune before they potentially stack it with multiple things in the chain. Uh, but they've got an accumulated fortune of their own. So it's a bit awkward for us because now our chain strike is offline. So, uh, and they are able to chain accumulated fortune to accumulated fortune. It's just, you know, having two or more effects of the same name already in the chain. So you can activate this and that is fine. Um, now I need to think I'm going to activate secret barrel here. Uh, and that will... Oh, I think actually I messed this up because it should have dealt damage to them before they drew off the fortune. And yeah, so actually we messed this up because uh, they should, I, I basically like, you know, I mess up my math on you know, their secret barrel because the secret barrel was activated before the fortune. Um, but then I forget where my barrel was. And um, so I, I had them take 400 more, which is actually um, not how it should be. So um so that's not the case. They should be at 4,600. I don't think it matters for the final math here because I think I win. Well, I mean, a bit of a spoiler there. I, I do win the game. Um, but I think I win by a little bit more than that amount. So, um, But in standby phase, I just go for a barrel here. I go for a trio here. Uh, I go for a Woboku here. And now I go for a chain strike. And that should be the end of the game. I could have also gone for a scapegoat before going for the chain strike. But if they've got a scapegoat of their own, I don't want to play into that. But also, I think if that's just desserts or something, I don't want to you know, open up the line for them to do like a just desserts plus uh, chain strike play or something like that. But um, but yeah, this should be the end of the game because, you know, chain strike is at chain link four. So that's going to be a 1600 damage chain strike. Uh, and then the secret barrel does, let's see, 12 plus, or uh, a John Tree will give them three tokens. So that'll be nine there. So that'll, actually, that'll be 3,400, so not quite game. So I should have, you know, I would have just activated the scapegoat here instead. Uh, and that would have also done it. Their set was chain strike, wasn't anything else. So they wouldn't have been able to kill us here, and that would have been enough to um, get the chain strike to kill them there. So we still would have won this game, uh, even if I uh, hadn't messed up the math. They would have been at 3,600. But, you know, that additional scapegoat, adding another link to the chain, would have put them at uh, more than enough to wipe them out there. But that's going to do it for the mirror. So... I think this is a cool mirror. I think there are a lot of different interactions they have to consider. You know, saving your card of the same name as your opponent's cards for the right moments to stop their chain strikes or accumulated fortunes is very interesting. So that's kind of neat. Um, also, you know, doing the math on like what you need to do and what your opponent needs to do to potentially kill each other is very, very cool. So um, I, I like this uh, sort of mirror match. I don't like the deck as a whole in the format, but I think the mirror match is cool. Um, but you know, again, I'd be happy to be proven wrong if someone is able to like optimize this deck and make it something that I think is actually good in the format and can potentially win tournaments. But I don't think the deck is quite there at this point. But let me know what you think about the deck down in the comments below. I always look forward to talking with y'all as always. And uh, until next time, I've been Ben from YGF from Zero. And I'm signing off. Oh, before I go, actually, you know, also I got to shout out my patrons. So big shout outs to GMY, Vest, Tyler Compton, Rinchman, Pork Trap, Coon, Brent Donker, and Dump Truck. Uh, I believe that's everyone there. But if you join the Patreon, you'll get shout out in these videos. Um, and so definitely do that if you're interested in that. But anyway, that's actually going to be goodbye. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it always. Until next time, I've been Ben for Watch Your and I'm signing off.